Hey, it's your professional sarcastic man and seeker of attention, Oz Chris, here with a look back at Transformers Classics, Volume 1. So, after watching Bumblebee, which is a fantastic and great Transformers film, you know, just pretty much use that to reboot the whole franchise because it was great. Uh, I asked one of my friends on Twitter, Spiderside, who is a it was a Transformers fan, particularly with uh, the comics. Uh, is there any, you know, is there any of the comics or the runs that you would recommend? And showing what the LCS I go to, what they had in store, uh, he said Transformers Classics is good. You know the the Marvel run. So I decided, you know, I'll pick that one up. Uh, is the cheapest of the ones that he recommended, and it was still available in store. So I picked it up, Transformers Classics Volume One, the Marvel uh, US run, because I know there's a UK run. So I'm I, I'm assuming this is the the US one. So, like my knowledge of Transformers, uh, I did used to watch uh, as a kid, like a lot of like you know obviously, uh, G One. Uh, Beast Wars, Robots in Disguise, Armada, Energon, all of those. I uh, wasn't really particularly huge with, like, lore in the comics. So, I picked just, you know, the I picked a G1 as just a safe, kind of a safe uh, start. Since that was the most I was kind of familiar with. So, Transformers Classics Volume 1. So, I do appreciate it's uh, mainly... You know, similar to the TV show, uh, with some changes, some, uh, quite a few changes, I was a bit surprised. So it does follow, you know, the same premise, you know, Autobots, Decepticons, uh, fighting on Cybertron. They both, uh, crash, crash land on Earth, awaken four million years later, uh, given, uh, given alternate modes based off all the vehicles on Earth at the time and resume their war on Cybertron. So that's, essentially the first four issues and like i know i like to complain that a lot of uh present comics are a bit wordy but like uh it's very wordy uh, mainly with just the introductions of like this is who everyone is okay this is skywarp this is thundercracker yada 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 uh it's like oh it's like okay yep 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 yeah i got the idea uh did the same with the autobots but i don't particularly find it a problem it's like this was only originally sl uh, slated to be a um four issue miniseries so it, you kind of had to they kind of had to in the first issue tell you this is who everyone is this is what they do because you're only going to get four issues that's it uh and if you just want to read the comics yeah these are the these are who they are uh but that wasn't the case it uh was became extremely popular and actually went on for more issues, so this is, uh, this volume only uh, contains the first thirteen issues, and I I enjoyed it. Like I honestly did enjoy it. I really liked reading this. I did like the kind of the changes from and slight differences from the uh, the G one TV show, uh, such as uh, you know Ravage, Laserbeak, and all that actually talk a bit more than they did. I think they. They only just used, had animal sounds in the, the G1 show, if I remember correctly. And these ones, actually, everyone talks. And the good thing about it is that after Shockwave is introduced with issue number five, it's a good example of, uh, of you don't always need Megatron to be the villain. As a lot of the, uh, the Bayform is kind of... Uh, uh, what they kind of did wrong with Megatron is like, okay, he's the most iconic, one of the most iconic Transformers in the franchise. Uh, let's have him be the villain, villain, and let's have him be in pretty much all of the films. Uh, first film, he was okay, but then the rest, he kind of plays second, uh, he's just kind of demoted to second in command. He's the <laughs> secondary antagonist, so... With the second film, it was The Fallen. With the third one, it was Sentinel Prime. Fourth one, he was Galvatron, and even then, I didn't really care. And fifth one, is just like, who, who, what's going on? Megatron, what's going on? But with this one, Megatron, despite being one of the most, you know, iconic uh, Transformers and Decepticons, he's only the villain within the first four issues of this, 
of this comic, of this collection of the of 13 issues, he's only the villain in 14 of them. Because when Shockwave takes over, Shockwave is a great villain. You know, if you want to do another Transformers film, you don't need Megatron to be the villain. Shockwave, this kind of perfectly shows that Shockwave is a great villain to use. Like, the, as a main villain, if you want to do another film. Uh, he's cold, he's calculated, uh, uh, he thinks ahead, uh, yeah, thinks ahead, uh, he's almost, he's everything that Megatron isn't really, he's not kind of like cold and calculated, uh, to, to him, everyone is just a tool as a means to the ends with, uh, Shockwave, which I did appreciate, uh, Shockwave definitely shined in this volume, and, also, same with uh, Megatron. This also showed you don't re you don't really need Prime to be the main protagonist of every issue. Uh, Ratchet later on when he has to team up with Megatron. Ratchet uh, as the only kind of last surviving Autobot there. Everyone's captured, uh, kind of decommissioned. Prime has had his head ripped off uh, to be used by Shockwave to create more Decepticons under his control. Uh, Ratchet and uh, Ratchet and uh, uh, Buster, they're the only ones that are that can help save the day. So, you know, you don't always have to rely on the most iconic and most recognizable characters uh, for the story to for a story to work. Like Ratchet got his a huge his huge time to shine within this uh, within these issues leading up to him. Pretty much helping rescue everyone. And it's great, definitely. I'm going to try and find a physical copy of the second volume. Uh, my LCS doesn't have it. Uh, I've tried other stores in uh, Australia. They don't seem to have it, so I'll probably have to go online to find it. But I, going into it with, with my very limited knowledge of Transformers, I came out wanting to read more. I definitely enjoyed it. I know uh, it's also the IDW comics, which are huge. <laughs> the uh, collections that uh, IDW have, they go for about like 80 bucks. <laughs> so, so, okay, I'm going to get to you eventually, okay? Just money is the problem. But 100%, this is a great start to a run. Uh, pretty much almost anything I would kind of want in a Transformers comic. Just great action story etc. Uh, humans aren't just uh, stupid. <laughs> like in the Bay, the Bay films are just like, most of them are just stupid because the plot says that they're stupid. <laughs> no, Buster, Buster really does like a lot to contribute to the fights as well, despite uh, his father not wanting him to uh, participate. Is it Buster? I think it's Buster. It's not Spike. Uh, yeah, I believe it is. Uh, anyway, but anyway, that's it. That's a look back at Transformers Classics Volume 1. Thank you for uh, Spider Side for the recommendation. I'll definitely be reading this and we'll get to the other recommendations sometime later in the future. That is all for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.